I think unwavering Sorry, loyalty is the first uh, requisite in the First Lady. Um, I think that that is very visible to the public, mm -hmm. uh, the First Lady's unwavering loyalty to the President, mm -hmm. and I think it generates its own form of political loyalty in the public. And it doesn't hurt if she's politically savvy as well. Yeah. As long as she doesn't overstep her bound and she becomes. Exactly. And that's, of course, where the Roosevelt's, where Mrs. Roosevelt. Um, now, don't of, beat up on my Eleanor. I'm not going to beat up on your Eleanor. <laughs> I, I, I loved Eleanor. Okay. And one of the things I just have to, uh, uh, one of the, the books that I liked best was the Doris Kearns book about the Roosevelt's because she didn't take sides. She showed that both these people mm -hmm. were larger than life, and they both made great contributions. Mm -hmm. And she didn't, uh, and this is one of the things I hate about what sometimes happens with my father, is people say, oh, poor Lady Bird. Oh, yeah. You know, she was married to that man, and he was so, you know. Um, mother just got mad every time that if somebody would praise her, if she knew that it was a way they got around having to be nice about daddy. Mm -hmm. and, then, yeah. and it would make her so angry. And I can't speak for Mrs. Bush, but I know that she, you know, she's been a wonderful wife to her husband. And, and it doesn't, I, I couldn't pay her enough compliments in the world if she thought that I was going to say one bad thing about her husband. Um, and I think that's wonderful. Uh, that's the way I was brought up, too. And, um, that's, of course, what happened with the Roosevelts. Uh, people would take one side or the other and blame uh, everything person. bad on Eleanor. If Eleanor would just get, keep her nose out of that area, she wouldn't get into that civil rights stuff. That's going to cost the president a lot of votes. And, and what about going down and meeting with those miners? Why is she doing that? That's just, first lady, first lady shouldn't be doing that. And then they would, they would, uh, uh, if, if she would only stay home and pay the right, you know, and be supportive and help him at home and be the good, good, uh, soft, easygoing spouse and not always be pushing him to do something. You know, he needs a little quiet and peace and she comes home and she tries to stir him up and won't let him get any, you know, any quiet time. I mean, that's true. And that book I like because it didn't take sides. It showed them both as the wonderful people they are. And that's the kind of book I like to see. I do too. Because I, most of us are like that. But the other, uh, just to go back in to defend my Eleanor here, <laughs> um, the trips to the mine were all approved by FDR. And the favorite, my favorite story about this is um, FDR is looking for, and so he calls her secretary, Malvina Thompson, oh, yeah. whose name is Tommy. And he says, Tommy, you know, where's my missus? And she says, well, Mr. President, you know, she's in jail. <laughs> and he says, well, I'm not surprised, but what for this time? <laughs> but, but um, and then, you know, she, he bandies around a lot, and he says, but they were great assets. What you need to know about Eleanor is that if FDR said don't do it, she didn't do it. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of folklore out there about Eleanor, you know, going behind his back and doing all this. What she was, was a conduit. She was a stalking horse. She was a stalking horse because he could <laughs> not get out. That's right. And she well, was his conduit to the left wing, exactly. which he could not, not do. He could not do himself and keep the Southern Democrats, whose votes he needed, in the party. So, you know, he would send Eleanor to be the, the contact with the, the left wing politically. And then when it was criticized, he'd say, I, I just can't do anything with my wife. 